Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I know this is kind of a kooky video, but I just really wanted to do it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think everybody can relate to the fact that we're all connected to other people and that we don't go through this life or achieve success and failure uh, all on our own. We have supporters in our corner that encourage us through the hard times and that really, really keep us going. And for me, one person that's been there for my entire life, which makes complete sense, is my mom. And so in shooting this video, and even though it's kind of cheeky and it's a little bit kooky, I just really want to let you guys know how much my mom actually means to me. You know, I'm a 55 year old woman with children of my own. And as a mom, it really means so much to me to spend time with my boys and just to have a chance to be around them. And sometimes I forget how important it is for me to do that same thing for my own mom. So when she came over on this particular day and we started spitballing and talking about our love of dolls, um, we just came up with this funny little couple of clips about things that she remembers about our journey together. So you obviously don't have to watch this, which is totally fine, but you may have in the past had the opportunity to meet my mom at one of the Tonner doll shows. And if you did, I hope you consider yourself as lucky as I consider you. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, this is a pretty exciting day because I am here with one of my biggest supporters and fans. Please state your name for the camera. <laughs> I'm Sherry, I'm Pam's mom. <laughs> <laughs> so she stopped by today to help me with some of my new sewing projects and to tell you guys a little bit of a background. Now, when I was a young girl, my mom taught me how to sew or attempted to teach me how to sew. Of course, as most young girls or young people in general, I didn't listen that well. I didn't actually do a lot of follow through skills that are required in sewing and I am self-taught, so I still make mistakes even to this day. But my mom really had the patience to spend time with me and to really work with me to uh, get through different projects and just being with her and having her pay attention to me and care about my ability to um, work on creating my own uh, skills and ability really meant a lot to me. And for that, I really just appreciate how patient she has been in the past and how patient she still is with me today. So I wanted to ask my mom where she thought all this craftiness came from. My grandmother, Shirley, was a fantastic crafter in a lot of different ways. She had a ceramic store, she did uh, porcelain pours, she did uh, sewing, quilting, just about everything. Later in her life, she did a lot of embroidery. I have numerous beautiful wall hangings that she created and lots of cool outfits. And uh, she just seemed limitless in her creativity. And my mom really, really, really did uh, inherit that from her. And I asked my mom if she thought that perhaps uh, the, the uh, craftiness of our family was a DNA issue. And this is what DNA. she said. I think maybe it is. My grandmother, Tammy's great-grandmother, was quite a seamstress. And I can remember all the things that she made. My mother made clothes for us. And I guess a lot of the dresses that my sister and I had, that either mom or grandma had made. And we've got all these pictures from when we were little kids with matching dresses. In addition to my mom teaching me how to sew, I remember in the summers when I was a young girl riding the Greyhound bus from Issaquah, Washington to Ellensburg to spend the week with my grandmother. And you'll see a little clip of my grandmother a little bit later in the video. And she was so great and so patient. And I remember her helping me sew my first outfit that I wore to school, which is a pair of denim floral overalls. And I wore them in my fifth grade uh, school picture. And I wish I could find that picture because I was really really proud of the top stitching on that particular item and then mom mom sewed and up until she couldn't any longer she sewed all sorts of things she belonged to a group when she lived in Arizona that made clothes for needy children she's always sewed she did embroidery she couldn't remember one thing or another but she could tell you how to run the sewing machine so mom when did you start sewing for dolls I probably started back in school and the uh, eight inch little muffies were real popular. And I had them dressed in all sorts of costumes and all around my windows. I sewed, <coughs> excuse me, doll clothes for a home ec project. This is way back when. And then I sewed a lot of clothes for my nieces for their Barbie dolls. 
One of my best memories as a kid is when I woke up on a Christmas day and my mom had made all new clothes for my Barbie dolls. Now, growing up as a kid, we went through, like many people, some lean times and some fat times. And when it was lean, I never really knew it as a kid because my mom really took time to make special things for me that made me feel rich. And let me tell you, when my Barbies had gloves and scarves and hats and jackets and all the things that I woke up to on that Christmas morning, I thought I was the richest kid in the neighborhood. One thing I recently asked my mom is what she likes to do when we spend time together. One of our one of our favorite haunts is that the Big Goodwill in Greensboro has a place where I think it's the last call on everything and things come out in these big bins that are probably four feet wide, six feet long, and oh, a foot, foot and a half deep. And they bring these big bins out and you go digging through them. But you wait till the crazies get out of there because you'll get run over. But we're not looking for what other people are looking for. Maybe we're looking for a certain fabric, not necessarily the garment. But we have a, a good time doing that. And many years ago, I worked for a place here in town that made draperies and that type of stuff. And that's where I started getting my silks. And now they have a sale about once a year. Now with COVID, they haven't had it. And we go down and buy bolts of fabric. So all the beautiful silks that you see are things that we have bought doing that. And the sewing machine that Tamara has been sewing on up until now was one that I bought in the 60s, used. It was a 19, what, 30 fab, 1960 fab, whatever it was. Mother had the original sewing machine. And this was the same as mom's and she paid $250 for it in 1950. So when you're paying $1,200 or $1,400 for a sewing machine today, it's no different. Back when my business first got started, before I even purchased the Fletcher Pattern Company and my mom and I would go into Greensboro to the doll market, that was some of the best times that we ever had together. They used to have an annual sale where you could wait in line and then everything was super discounted. And we would go and get there at like 5.30 or six o'clock in the morning to wait in line because we wanted to make sure we got our hands on the best pick of Tonner dolls that were available at that time. Those were some of the funnest memories I have of spending time with my mom in this doll hobby. I, we started out buying dolls and, and selling dolls. Uh, there was a place in Greensboro that we went and shopped at. And one time, I think Tammy's first big purchase of $1,000. And I thought, oh my God. And we brought these dolls and we stripped them down. We sold their shoes, we sold their clothes, we sold the wigs, you know, and that's kind of how the business started. And then uh, when I made my first purchase, I thought I was gonna have a heart attack too. And I bought and sold, a lot of them I still have. I specifically remember when we would go to the doll market and we would get those new dolls from Tonner. My mom and I really did have that epiphany or that light bulb moment where we thought, gosh, these dolls don't really have any clothes. And at that time on eBay, especially the one of a kind dolls um, category was just booming. And that gave us the idea that maybe we should just try to make some patterns for these dolls. Then we started looking at it and some of these dolls didn't have any clothes. Yeah, I mean, whatever they came with is what they had. And I think Tammy's first one was Marley that she made in what, 1905 or something like that. 1905? 1905. <laughs> How about... 2000, I think right. 2005 maybe. 2005, I think it's better, but okay. I mean, they're a little bit older than she Sorry. is. And then I started, yeah. I think my first one that I actually printed a pattern for was the America model. She was kind of my favorite. And, and that was an early one. And then the other one that I made for her was the stepping out, which I've got for all of the dolls, which is a, a real simple pattern. And it's just kind of evolved. I think I've got probably a hundred patterns now for various dolls. And then I came up with the sewing ham, or the pressing ham. And that has been a super seller and I know that Tammy uses it and she promotes it for me a lot on things, but it's been one of my best patterns and I think really a help for anybody who wants to sew for your dolls. So if you're looking for a link to that uh, pattern for the sewing hams, I'll leave it in the description below and you can get that um, from my mom on her Etsy store.
So mom, you're selling originally started on eBay, but now you're really focusing your attention more on Etsy. Is that correct? That is correct. And where can these people find you? What are the selling names that you're using on those two platforms? Okay, on eBay, my seller's name is Sherry O.B. or House of O'Brien. On Etsy, it is House of O'Brien, all one word. And the reason I switched over to Etsy is a lot of people like the PDFs and eBay isn't real fond of us selling on PDFs and a lot of people in Europe pay so much shipping on their patterns and with the PDF it makes it easy accessible to everybody. So when it comes to actually sewing patterns or sewing doll clothes, what do you prefer more? Do you like to create a pattern or do you find more comfort in just coming up with new designs or do you like to sew the same thing all the time? I like to do something different. I ventured out into some different dolls. I now have added the smart doll to my collection, who is a, a 22 inch doll from, from Japan. And she's fun to sew for. I've got one pattern out and a couple others in the works. I enjoy the designing of the patterns. Writing the descriptions is often hard because I sew them and I think, oh, I gotta write the directions as I'm sewing them so somebody else understands. When my mom talks about how hard it is to write the descriptions for the doll clothes patterns, she's absolutely right. And one of the funny things is, as I always rib my mom about being a terrible speller. Well, recently someone was commenting on one of my videos and mentioned that I had numerous spelling errors in my YouTube video. And from there, I was prompted to actually install Grammarly on my computer, which made a huge difference. And I found out that I too, genetically and by DNA, might also be a terrible speller. Well, Mom, I really appreciate you sharing this information with everybody. Why don't you tell them what is actually in the closet behind you without opening the doors? <laughs> Well, I think we all have one of those places. And you look for something, you dig it out, and then you just shove everything back in the closet and shut the door. I think everybody, every crafter has a spot like that, whether it be a closet or a drawer or under the bed. And we all have to have a place to hide things. You know, it's not a matter of the one who dies with the most fabric wins. <laughs> One thing, I, I do a lot of number of things, uh, crafts, I quilt, I do cards, I do this, I do that. And Tamara always says when I die that she's going to put a sign on the house, craft with delight as is. So it's, it's a family trait. And I think anybody who crafts will have to admit that what you see in the public eye is not what's behind the doors. Well, I hope you guys can totally appreciate this one-on-one -on -one with my mom. She's been dying to be a YouTube star, so make sure you like and subscribe to this video and follow her on eBay and Etsy under House of O'Brien. And that's where I use those really cool little sewing hams in my dis demonstrations. So thank you guys so much for coming by and we'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody. Mom, would you be willing to share with these fine people what a successful home ex student I was in high school? Ha ha. <laughs> My mom is incredibly talented and always has been. She's been extremely talented at being a mom that loves and cares for me, that encourages me, that has been a number one supporter of mine. She's also individually talented at making people feel welcome and seen and cared for. She's a hard worker and she also makes fantastic quilts and beautiful cards and she just, takes time to learn different things and just amazes me constantly with her ever renewing skill. I learn a lot from my mom and I thank her so much for all the gifts that she's given me, which have been countless. And I just really want you guys to know that if you have a mom in your life, which I'm hoping you do, make sure to tell her how much you actually love her. You know, we take people for granted unintentionally because we're busy. And this is my quick little video interview with my mom to hold her up and let people see what an incredible, amazing woman she is. So if you know my mom or have ever met her, please list that in the comment section below, but only if it's nice. And if you haven't met my mom, I hope you're lucky enough to know her going forward. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.